It's been so real. I mean, the real spill, the spillionaire. Coming out of Drop Nation, surfing the wave, searching for the Presta. Going back to some of the balcony drop, man, 2016, 17. Man. <laughs> wow. How fast have we got here, you know, to 2022 and beyond, man. Yeah, my naga, you know, I'm going to go ahead and give you a bonus, man. Hey, press the 101. Hey, pop off. <laughs> press the 101. Let go. <laughs> we out of here, man. Hey, this one's for the um, wave surfers, man. You know what I mean? That's been uh, rocking the wave from the very, very tip. I had to do something special for y'all, as well as for... You know, all the brand new surfers, man. You know, when we say balcony surf, we just mean to remind you to go back to 2016 and, you know, get the king drop, you know, get the transformation, get the drive nation flow, you know, to get to con drive. We had to do a lot of choosing up, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, it's been a grow up process for all of us, you know, in this, in this way. Six years is a long time, man. Wow. I mean, six years is a mighty long time. It goes by so quick, you know, but when you look at the children, I'm like, yo, you know, I got a seven-year-old. And I'm like, man, I started this when I was, when you was one years old, you know, I started this first recording right here, you know what I mean? Didn't ever mean to be going this path, you know what I mean? Just a path that opened up a chance to confirm and validate our truth. Six years, you know, you get a PhD, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I declare, <laughs> I was telling my children, I said, I declare what well, every uh, third Shabbat, June, what was it, June 26th, <laughs> Preston <to> John, <laughs> With the Sunday, I think we popped it off or dropped it on the Sunday after Shabbat. So the Sunday after every Thursday, <laughs> Thursday Shabbat, every uh, June, in the, in the month of June. <laughs> Press the John. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Press the John 100. You know, Press the John Investigation Day, man, where everyone kicks back, gets a book out, and just uh, do some recon. Talk about the recon. Just revisit the recon. Hey, man. All right. Y'all got it, man. <laughs> after every third Shabbat, because, you know, the dates be changing. But every after every third Shabbat, the day after every third Shabbat, man. So allow. Wow. We still got that fire burning. Shout out to my fence building Nagas. We got Nagas in transit, man. Still touching the soil for Joy World. Don't forget to, uh, you know, keep your contribute contributions connecting for the cons you know that's on the road making these big sacrifices in their life man to build this fence and keep the flow going for the tribe so hey how to my fence building nagas and all the contributors all the dragons on the wall supporting all the ways you're doing at 432 to drop radio i had to get this bonus for you man and again man my balcony surfers <laughs> you know um hey man if you know about the mystery of the 27th episode. <laughs> Ty Battle like, yeah, I know, man. Apparently there was a missing 27 and we filled it in, but there was a 27 that was done. And I think, you know, I ain't gonna point no fingers, but you know, I, uh, <laughs> you know, it just went missing. I guess all I can say. <laughs> You know, YT, you know, YT, the homie YT. I don't think they wanted 27 out there, man. You know, it got snatched off the two. I know I remember, you know, I know I didn't skip 27. You know, that's crazy. I didn't go for 27. <laughs> but we did give a supplement 27, but it wasn't the OG 27. So that's just filling you in. So when I say I go to, I got the press to 100. Aqua Ty's like, man, that's 99. <laughs> he must have forgot 27, so. 
She already knew this was coming. <laughs> Press the one, honey. Hey, man. <laughs> For the real wave surfers. <laughs> so we have no excuse, even though press the one, press the, uh, no, this is one on one. 100 was six hours, man. I didn't expect for it to be that long. So come on, man. Come on, Ty. Come, <laughs> come. That was a six hour press the one, Hano, man. By the way, I changed my name to Hano. You know what I'm saying? So you can call me Drop or those that uh, love me call me Hano because we got the press the one. Hano. Yeah, y'all ready to surf the wave, man. I'm I'm just, you know, feeling good in this bonus, man. I'm, I'm charged up with my noggins, man. I just feel good. I'm just smiling from ear to ear. I got some rest. I slept all day. And uh, I got a lot of catching up to do on the emails and just getting my packs out on my noggin support. And so the water for your support and for your patience and allowing me to hit this checkpoint. It was a big, you know, um, it was a group checkpoint, man. It was a tribal checkpoint. You know what I'm saying? I know that we needed it right now. So I pushed the line on it because I knew my knockers needed it right now to continue the investigation, to have those conversations with your tribe, with your family, you know, to have the validation out there, man, to have the sources represented, you know what I'm saying, represented. So I'm just chilling, man. <laughs> Press the 101. Can't believe I'm saying this, you know what I'm saying? Charged up with you. I want to talk to Lady Dragons on the wall. Shout out to the Aqua. Hey, can we talk to Lady Dragons for Preston 101? I know the Templar don't mind that. <laughs> for the Aquas, look out for the fifth way. I got it done, so I feel good about finally announcing that uh, this coming Shabbat, you know, we will be popping off the fifth wave, man. Shabbat show 2.0, man. I'll be I'll be rested up, ready to go. And we'll start the uh, you know, start the flow, start the season. And uh, you know, it it goes when when we ready to move, you know, when when we ready to pop off, when we ready, man. So be the wave, you know what I'm saying? So we ready and the wave is here. So let's fall back. Let's talk some queen tomorrow you know, or King Tamar. This is the queen named King. <laughs> I know, right? But, you know, shout out to my lady dragons, you know what I'm saying? There's many times that the Aquas had to take the wheel and we'll be remiss not to bring in the balance, bring in the flow, as much King talk as we talk, to talk the queen name King, name Khan. And many times the aquas and even households today, <clears throat> Shalak, been doing a lot of talking, a lot of popping. <laughs> even the aquas today, in a lot of houses, man, um, my house, you know what I'm saying, in terms of growing up, you know, uh, mom and dad splitting up when I was 13. Mama had to take the wheel in many ways, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's like, uh, There's no second fiddle, you know, when it comes to Big Mama. There's no second fiddle. <laughs> Mama, first of all creations, Proverbs chapter 8. You know, you dig? So there's a very special place for the righteous, for the righteous aquas, the righteous sisters, man, throughout the entire journey that stood on the front lines. I'm talking the high Amazon queen. I'm talking Kalelu. Wow. Ain't nothing like an opportunity to surf the way with you. Byzantine, let's go. The Byzantine related to Byzantium, now Istanbul. The Byzantine Empire or the Eastern Orthodox Church of a system or situation excessively complicated and typically involving a great deal of administrative detail. So, you know, you got a 
very orderly a situation. Okay. Uh, an ancient Greek colony founded by name Bizes, located on the eastern or European side of Bosporus, a strait linking to the Black Sea, linking the Black Sea to the Mediterranean. The site of Byzantium was ideally located to serve as a transit and trade point between Europe and Asia. This is a very important point. I'm glad that we get to connect because when we talk the Byzantine Empire, we're talking the Silk Road, man. We're talking Hania. You're talking a very important connection in ancient Russia, Russia, Russia. You got Kazari. Now, whether or not we're talking about, you know, Russia, Russia, just over there in this Asia, or we're talking about the connection in our Asia, you know, this is a bonus. So I assume you know that we in Asia by now. <laughs> now, look how big Russia is, man. And remember the Russia is <laughs> connected to you, man, because you are the Rus. The Rus. The Rus, the Rus is on fire. We don't need no water. Let them move. Burn. Let's press the water up. Just talking about the lost tribes of Israel. The Saracen. Rush. Kazaria. Mazak, <laughs> Kazaria, also known historically as Mazaka, was an ancient city in what is now Kasari, Turkey. And now it's a large industrialized city in central Anatolia, seat of Kazari province. Pay very close attention. When we talk Ka, we're talking the Ka. The Ka is the dragon. The Ka is the dragon. Energy. Ka. Dragon. Oops. Can't spell, man. It's pressed the one on one. Still can't spell, man. <laughs> well, they're going to take you right to Dragon Ball Z, Origins of Key. Key is the cop. Come on, man. And this is what I mean. Like, they, they create all this anime. They create this anime just to. They want to replace reality, you know what I'm saying? with anime, you know, they, they want to replace you with something mythological, fictional, man. The Ka is the key. We've been talking the Ka the whole time with the Kara Katai or the Kara Kawa. The Cherokee is the Kara Ka. Key, key, Ka, Ka. Key is the Chi. <laughs> the Chi is the Chicago. The chi is the China. The chi is the key. The blast of Kamehameha, man. But who's Kamehameha? Kamehameha. <laughs> Well, I mean, just pulling up the first link I see. It's not very hard to recon. This is the Hawaiian royal family. When I say Hawaiian, I mean 
Hawa. The king Kamehameha. This link is called Africana Presence in Hawaii. You know, you're talking about indigenous copper color cons. <laughs> Each Hawaiian ruler was very dark scanning with Negro features, my name. So <laughs> the Ka is the key, is the dragon. The Kamehameha or Kamaya Kamaya blast is a key blast or a shy blast like Shikamagua. Oh, you forgot? <laughs> can't make this stuff up, man. We can't make this stuff up. Oh man, we even we ain't even dug on the Shikamagua dam, man. These damn dams. It's a Shikamagua dam, damn it. Damn, damn it. I wonder what Naga City got flooded by the Shikamagua dam, man. It's press the one on one in real time, man. Doing recon in real time, man. I'm talking she. Flooded. City. <sighs> underwater. I don't know. What? It's an underwater tunnel, man. It's all kind of stuff happening, man. You got underwater ghost towns all throughout Tennessee. Just look up the, what's that, the Tennessee TVA or something like that. And they always build these things as if there's some type of, you know, savior. You know, oh, it's brought more irrigation to such and such. So all it does is redirect water. Redirect water. And then flood out other Naga cities. Yeah, the TVA. Recon the TVA about this Tennessee damn dams and how many Naga cities is underwater, but I'm just talking Shikamaga, man. Don't let me get ahead of myself, man. <laughs> the Shikamaga. I'm just, you know, we popping off. So she is she, man. Chicago, Shikamagua. Cherokee is Kara, Ka, Ka, Ka. So we're talking about the key, we're talking about the Ka. And I just want you to say, this ain't no accident, man. You got the key. You wouldn't say, ch, ch. In our language, it would be a k k in our language. The kikamakwa, ka ka kamakwa, ka ka. Let's go. Let's go, man. <laughs> so that's the she, that's the key. Got it.
<laughs> okay, so Ka. <laughs> We went all the way to Dragon Ball Z from Ka, you know what I mean? <laughs> went to the key, went to the Shikamagwa, back to the Kazari. <laughs> I mean, that's really way surfing one on one. You know what I'm saying? And uh, brace a while, you know what I mean? We ain't making nothing up. We're just putting Humpty Dumpty back together again. So, Kazari, this is all. All this gonna tie into my lady dragon, you know, investigation, man. Let's go. So the Kara or Kazar Ria. The Czar was the Czar. Well, Czar meaning, right? Let's go. Also T S A R. That's the emperor. I mean, you know, that's the Khan. No other way to say it. That's the king, right? An emperor or king. Okay. Simple enough. Kazar, Kazar, so modern day Kazars, you know, today if you put in Kazar, I don't know, what are you going to show us? Kazars, Kazar, Kazari, hold up right quick. I was looking at the baby meetings. Gazar, Gazar. Variant of Gaza, Gaza, like Gaza. Okay. Variant of Lazar, like Eleazar, man. I'm just, you know. <laughs> they they put the L on it suddenly. Variant of Lazar. Something about the Caucasus. I mean, are, are these people even Caucasian? Right. And then we say Eleazar. We click on Lazar. You got Lazarus, Eleazar, Lazaro, Jewish or Hebrew, German, Hungarian, Slov Slovian, Polish from a personal name of Aramaic, a reduced form of the Hebrew. Bang. Something about Kazar. Happened to connect back to Lazar and Eleazar. Ping, pow. It's pressed a one on one. All praise for why. For the inspiration to do this bonus, I was about to, you know, pop off and, you know, took some very important uh, pressing, pressing stuff. But I said, man, let me, nah, 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 man. One more, man. This the last full. This is the very last full. Press the John investigation installment on YouTube, you know, one on one. After that, you can get 102, 103, 104, 105 directly at 432 thedrop.com. So I'll drop snippets here, but if you want that drop, you got to go get it. You got to check in with the tribe, get in the drop chatter, <laughs> and enjoy the drop that's about to be dropping in the fifth wave, my nine. We just belly flop into. From Kazar to Lazar to Eleazar. Did y'all see that? Because, I, you know, I don't got this written down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is happening in real time. Real spill. All right. All right. I wasn't ready for it. I, I wasn't even ready for that because we were just talking Czar. We were talking Kazaria based on the Kazar flow. I ain't even started talking Mazaka yet. Your wave servers know where this is going, right? So 
I'm just breaking down Kazar, Kazar, which is also Caesar, which makes us look at these Caesars and the way they gave us history and how they're pronouncing Caesar with this C, but the C connects with this K of Kazar. We said Kazarian meaning, Kazar. We know them C's as K's. They went to Kazarian Jew, right? They, they're linking it with the Hebrew right away. They link it from Kazar to Gazar. I just clicked on the first. I'm not even reconning hardcore, though. I'm just surfing the wave, man. Just what are y'all saying over here? They connect Kazar with Lazar. It says C Eleazar. We said cool. <laughs> what is Eleazar talking about? I mean <laughs> Eleazar. How did Kazar flip the laser? That was just like an alley -oop. That was an alley -oop. How did Kazar get the Gazar? Itself a variant of Lazar. <laughs> and then they alley -oop us. And you might want to see Lazar. We say like Eleazar, and they say, uh, yeah, just like Eleazar. Hebrew. Hebrew. Eleazar or Lazarus. Yosef, take the wheel. Okay. Okay. We're just talking Kazar and Kazari. I wasn't ready for this. Hey, by the way, free Phineas, my nugget, free, free Phineas, because Phineas is also Eleazar, you know. Phineas, priest during the Israelite Exodus journey, the grandson of Aaron, son of Eleazar, Kaka, Shalak. So <laughs> we were close. That's why we have to, you know, make sure we get that drive like it's the first time. Phineas is the son of Eleazar, man. <laughs> Look how close we was, man. All right, so okay, Eleazar is Lazar. Exodus six, got it. Lazar from Kazar or Gazar or Gaza. So even all this Gaza strip flow is all Eleazar flow. The Gaza is the Kazar, is Kazaria, but who's who's Kazaria? And who's Eliezer? Because, <laughs> damn, it's getting too good. Because look, man, Eliezer is the grandson of Aaron. Aaron is the brother of Moshe. Priesthood, blue, purple, red, white, linen, go thread. Phineas is commended by Hawa in the book of Numbers, chapter 25. He put a stop to the play for having stopped Israel's fall into idolatrous practices. He was appointed high priest of Israel. to serve the way. Could be something, could be nothing, but how many Eleazars you got? Um, you know. that are really, you know, proven to have staying power <laughs> based on their accolades, based on who they are, you know, to Hawa. This Eleazar was appointed high priest to Israel. Hawa said, I'm pleased with you. I'm going to hold back this plague because 
you put an end to this idolatry. Connect the Eleazar with the Phantom of Duplications. Again, love to the Hakan, love to Yosef for finishing that Caesar's Messiah, bringing in that Lazarus flow, typologies. Fifth wave, we out of here. Got it. Hebrew, Lazar, Eleazar, composed of the elements El, God or Azar, help, meaning may God help him, may Hawa help him. Hawa has helped. This was well established in Central Europe as a Hebrew name, but was also popular among Christians because it is recorded in the New Testament. Lazarus, man, phantoms and duplications. Let's press the one on one. We're going to keep it going at 432 to drop.com, though, man. 432 to drop radio. Download the app for free. we popping off, man. You had all this time to get here. Now enjoy the ride. It's going to be easy, an easy flow, a patient flow, a flow of redemption for the night. Lazarus, New Testament, hijack, duplication, phantom of the real deal, the Eleazar, the Lazar flow. The Eleazar flow is the grandson of Aaron. How does it connect to Moses? Well, how would it connect to Mazaka? Because I'm just talking about Kazar. Lazar, Kazari, they say it's a variant of Lazar. That means Lazar is coming first. We talked about how the G's and C's are interchangeable, but the L's though, <laughs> you're just talking L. El Hawa and that Azar they say is help. So although we got that Azar is a emperor or king, but it's truly a king that's here to help. It's not just any king, kind of like a an Arab. An Arab is really a Rab, a Rabbi from the root Ra for Ra. <laughs> Love this Templar. We're going to get some great comments, man. We out of here. I just had to do this bonus, man. I just had to. We just had too much on the table. And I just want to say, I, you know, I truly a hobby y'all, man. And, you know, this is for y'all, for real. Everybody. He's brand new to surfing the way. This is for you. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate y'all for tuning in, man, and sharing the drop and just being a part of the journey. Hey, Rob, you know, now you're talking about, you know, this teacher, you know what I'm saying, this priest, this flow. So if you're not in the priesthood, if you're not in code, you're not a true a Rob. You're not a true a Rab, which is where you get the a Rab proper, a proper rabbi, a Rab, and a pretend a Rab, you know what I'm saying, who's not truly in the customs of Hawaii, but they're doing their own thing, walking around their queue. You got Kazar. <laughs> we got Ka. Took it to some Dragon Ball Z flow. <laughs> All right. So the key is the Ka. Latent energy, fighting power, life force. That's that dragon. That's that Ka. The Ka is the dragon. Okay. Now the Ka is yelling, Kamehameha. Kamai, Kamai. But that is an actual indigenous kind of Hawaii, Hawaii, kind. <laughs> dark skin with Negro features. The Ka is the key, as in the key or the she Kamagwa, which is also this Olmec flow, you know, the Shishia dynasty, X I, X I A, is the she, is the key. 
Shikamago been at war the whole time. You know they had to be fighting with that car. You know they had to be fighting with that fighting power, that life force. The force is a tangible energy inside every living being. But you must have forgot. We must have forgot about energy, frequency, vibration. If you think Dragon Ball Z is making this up, if you think that this is not based on real life <laughs> events in our story, we're just talking energy. What do you mean? How are you going to make up energy? Kama, 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 kamelia. Oh. Right in our face, bro, the whole time. <laughs> Who knows that song, man? Kamaya, kamaha. The ha is the breath. The breath. The breath. Force energy. The breath. Fighting power. Life force. The force is a tangible energy inside every living being with this major focus being in the center of the body. By drawing it out, an individual is able to manipulate it and use it outside the body. Ki, ka, ka. Can be used for many different techniques because there are physical limits to the strength of the body itself. It is necessary to increase one's ki, ka, to overcome this barrier and become stronger. Usually the more concentrated the masses are, the more time the user requires to draw it out by powering up. Power. Kamahamaha. Kamai, Kamai. Royalty. Naga. Royalty. I'm talking about my lady dragons on the wall. Peace to the queen. Alawa. So what happened to these queens? What happened to the cons? What happened to the Nagas in Hawaii? If there's ever, if there was ever a paradise on earth, the Hawaiians, the Hawaii appear to have had it. Baruch, by gorgeous, glorious climate, the people basked in the sun, swam in clear water, and participated in competitive games and sports. Yeah. What happened to the cons in Hawaii? They infiltrated to the rescue came hundreds of white missionaries following the death of Kamaya, Kamahamaha the first. In a misguided frenzy, these foreigners began an assault on Hawaiian culture that ultimately led to a complete demoralization of the native Naga people and pave the way for the loss of their land. Seventeen ninety seven. <laughs> Eighteen twenty four talking King. Kamaya, Kamaya, right? Kamehameha. (sighs) 
Kamehameha, the wave, right? We just talk about surfing the wave. They don't mind us. Kamehameha, Kamehameha. The Kamehameha wave, right? You surfing the wave? We're still talking the Ka, the key, back to the Ka, Czar. Czar is the emperor that's here to help you. So not their hijack, heathen king, but the Khan, the Khan from Hawa, the Khan sent from Hawa to help. Sometimes that's an ox, sometimes it's an aqua. And when it's all right, <laughs> and when it's all right, it's one thing, frame or shape or flow. The Kamehameha way is the what they say you know eighth episode of dragon ball the eighth episode of the emperor pilot saga this episode first aired in japan on april 16 1986 the american uh, air day was october 28th, 1995. Kamehameha took him 50 years to, to perfect. Master Roshi puts out the flames on Fire Mountain with the Kamehameha wave, but destroys the castle in the process. <laughs> you know, you wonder what they had to roll up on when they came up on Kamehameha, the first. He said he gained gun control of Hawaii because of his use of firearms obtained from white traders. So was this how they got in? Was this how they infiltrated Kamahamaha, Ka, this talking Ka in Hawaii, man. King Kamahamaha was the first to rule all the islands. Six other kings and a queen would succeed him to the throne. Like I said, Lady Dragons on the Wall. We've been talking about this James Cook when we talk Anion and how he, you know, was rolling up right there at the Anion flow. So he's important to the Anion investigation as well as this Hawaiian Kamehameha investigation, generally described as a very dark and extremely handsome. Copper color Ka, Kamehameha, or Kamai, or Kamehameha. The Great, as he is often called, was a very capable ruler. He encouraged industry, promoted international trade, checked opposition or checked oppression and suppressed crime. So this is a precedent. You know, every precedent to make all the right moves and this and this and that. You can always say, oh, this, you know, he, he shouldn't have accepted no help from this and he should have done it up. But we paying attention to the press this and the press the investigation. And that's not always about a man. A lot of times it's about our aquas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Very dark, extremely handsome. Kamaya, 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 Maya, the great, very capable ruler. He encouraged industry, promoted international trade, checked the hijack, suppressed crime. His greatest drawback, however, turned out to be the faith he had in Europeans. Captain James Cook was the first white man to reach Hawaii. Whoa. We, he keeps coming up and we keep asking the same question. We talking James Cook or, or uh, Captain Hook, like the Peter Pan found a youth flow, you know. Or we talking James T. Kirk of the Star Trek Enterprise. Bowley going where no white man had reached before. He visited the islands in January 1778. Pause. Sixteen 
1778. It's right at the pop offness of the Shikamagua War. The Shishi. Shikamagua refers to the group that separated from all these other so called Cherokee that wanted to make deals, make peace with the hijacks, with treaties of pieces and friendships. 19 or Shalak 1787 or so. So we're talking Tennessee still, Tennessee Valley Authority. That's the TVA. Look it up. That's the damn Dan drop. I'm still talking. She, she, she. Shot Town, listen up, man. Shout out to my Shot Town, Nagas, because you got the key. By key, I mean car. <laughs> Let's go. 1778. So that's when James T. Kirk, you know, the Star Trek Enterprise, boldly going where no white had gone before, pulls up on Hawaii. He's finding Hawaii at the peak of the pop-offness of the she or the key. Kikamaga Wars, that refers to a group of Nagas. We're talking the Karaka that separated. Separated. Why? Because during the American Revolutionary War, the majority of the Cherokee people wished to make peace with the hijack. They say, hell nah. We're going up with this land, man. They don't just get 30 million acres of land because they want to. We going all the way up with this land. I'm talking about dragging canoe to Combsack. Weren't about no deals, weren't about your treaties. They say, what? You're going to give up how much in 1809? Look up the Fort Wayne Treaty. 30 million acres of land. 30 million acres of land. That's our inheritance. How much is that? How much of that is your inheritance? All of that is your inheritance. All of it, man. They had no right to give it up. No right. And the Kumse said, how are you going to make this deal from under us, up under us? We weren't a part of your council to make that deal. The Shawnee weren't present. The Creek weren't present. The Seminole weren't present. That's why they fighting. These are the tribes that weren't present. And you're giving up 30 million acres of land, of our land, our children's land. They said, nah, man, check that. We're going to war, Jack. It's up there. And from that point, it kept being up and kept being up and kept being up. We talked Texas Indian War, Karakahua. We talked about the Tote Texas. Belgezar in there, man. Yosef Marua in them, man. We're talking she, right? They talking 1778, right? Yeah. Seventeen seventy eight, he visited the islands. Who? Captain James T. Kirk. <laughs> James Cook, man. Let's go. Let's go. One Hunno. <laughs> they call me Hunno, man. Those that love me call me Hunno. Traded with the natives and was well treated after returning to Hawaii in November, 1778. And remaining into the next year, he was killed when a quarrel arose between his co traveling companions in Hawaii. So Captain James T. Kirk, <laughs> James Cook, Captain Hook, he was murdered. So a lot of them went over here, man, and got murks, you know, as the Banico style, you know, became martyrs, you know what I'm saying? Catholic martyrs. 1778, man. Kamai, Kamai, Kamaha, Kamaha. Lady dragons on the wall. <laughs> they cut our inheritance off, man. Look at this copper color queen. Look at this copper kind of color car.
<laughs> hey, shout out my bro Hezekiah, man. This look, <laughs> this look exactly like my bro Hezekiah, man. <laughs> for real, for real. Hey, shout out to Aqua Abiyya. What it do? A Viper. What it do, man? So, we, I mean, come on, man. Come on, man. I can't make this stuff up, man. I can't make this stuff up, man. <laughs> Look just like the Ark, man. Let's go. That's our key right there, man. <laughs> we talking she, she, Zar, K Zar, Ka, Kamaya, Kamaya, Emperor, Khan, Khan is Ka, right? Let's go back. Talking Kazars, you're talking Lazars, El Lazar, El Al Awa. So this Kazar has everything to do in its origin with Hawa. And what is Mazaka? We got this, right? We got it before, right? also known historically as Mazaka, ancient city in what is now Kazari, Turkey. Kazari, Kazari. It's very close to Istanbul, so you see all this is coming together. This Turkey vibe, but we're talking them Turks. <laughs> but even in the OG Turk fly, vibration, you know, you got this priestly pressed to flow and this is where they've been jacking man look how close this is to spain they had to they had <laughs> you about to re we about to read this ottoman flow right this ottoman turk flow and the war that this Byzantine empire was fighting these weren't some traditional christians of nothing man these are hebrews these are hebrews and we about to prove it again Coming right out the Kazari, Kazar, Czar, Czar, Emperor flow, Khan flow, Dragon Khan flow, Kazari. Is it over here happening or is it where we're, you know, <laughs> posted happening? But we're just talking the Rus and Rusha, remember? Just because it's over here don't mean it ain't you. The R E. W.S. is the R.U.S., the Lady Roos. I mean, even right now, you can look up Lady Roos, man. Lady Roos, Andrews. Oh, look at all this hijack, man. Come on, man. Come on. Nah, man. Come on, man. Just got to work a little. Just got to work a little, make sure, you know, we can get the proper representation of my queen, Lady Andrews, man. Uh, man come on. Royals, man. You know, we're talking to Royals. Oh, man. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, man. This is what we got to contend with now. This is how much they've hijacked our energy. I got to be so specific. Let's just say Lady Andrews, man. Wow. Do I really got to put in black? <laughs> Do I really got to put in Negro? It's ridiculous. Yeah, see, they really coming behind, man, because it was never this hard to find the Aqua Lady Roos, man.
now it's all about Julie Andrews. It's ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. <laughs> and it's just a thousand pictures of the same person, Julie Andrews, as if we typed in Julie Andrews, man. That's crazy. Crazy talk. Even when you put black royals, man, it's crazy. They just give you black and white. A thousand movie pictures of Julie Andrews. This is ridiculous. <laughs> for real, for real. But black royal answer. <laughs> you just get black and white now, man. Uh, this is interesting. We got some castles. You think they built these castles, man? Who built these castles? All your things, my naga. All your stuff. I mean, this might be, this here might be the last authentic image <laughs> of the Lady Rose, man. I mean, just checking around. They've been wiping them out, man. We see when we look at this Andrew's crest, you know, you always see a naga on top, right? You know what I'm saying? Repeatable, observable, man. So, you know, you see the six-pointed flow, emeralds. You're talking nobility. Nobility. You've gone a long time without your nobility. Right now, we're just talking lady dragons on the wall. When you talk Europe, you got a mixture of families from the Israelite families, you know, tribes of Jacob, you got tribes of Moab, you got tribes of Edom, you know, you got all these tribes. So when you're digging on the Roman Empire, you know, this TV show, shout out to Shonda Rhimes, you know, she put a little bit of it in there, but she tried to make it seem like they were mixed through some white man into nobility. And that's, that's the shame, you know what I'm saying? When there was nobility all throughout Europe already, Naga nobility didn't need no white to mix into. This is not a secret <laughs> when it comes to European history. So that's why they can't claim Europe without talking about the Naga. The takeover. Yeah, you know who Charles V is, man. Holy Roman Emperor. This is the Holy Roman Emperor, Charles V, man. <laughs> He's the, emperor, he's the emperor of Rome. <laughs> I mean, that got to tell you something. St. Maurice. So all these Naga saints and rulers and cons and all this stuff. So Andros, again, always with a Naga on top. Crest of Van Roos. Again, we're just talking Russia. So when you see all, <laughs> this is like finding terror. Terra Vista, you know, something on the map, like just hell of land. When you talk Europe, you're talking Russia. You know, don't just say, oh, this is Europe now. And all this unchartedness is Russia. All this is Russia. All this is the house of Rus. Moors in Spain and Moors in France and Moors in Italy are still connected with the house of Rus one way or the other. Either they fight against it or they with it. We're just talking Kazaria right now, though, and the connection with Istanbul. So let's go. So when I'm talking Russian roots, man, just know I'm talking the truth, man. We talking the truth, man. The Tau, man. X marks the spot. Press the 101. Let go, man. You talking Cathay. You talking Cathens. <laughs> Clan Rus, Clan Seal, Andreas. 
they say meaning the race of Andrew. Well, that's how they try to link them in to their saints, but we're just talking the roots, man, right? <laughs> However, from about year 1100, the Andrews moved south to Dumfrieshire area of Southwest Scotland. You know, the Scottish flag also has that town on it, right? Same town. Same town, the House of Rules with the Naga on top. Scotland. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they get into the into the inner workings of Scotland. But, you know, the Scottish flag look like. For Scotland, right? So they still got that, that roost towel on it, okay? And this is where your towers or your, your tar or sanctus is connected to. They say more, and I say, yeah, we're talking great, but which house, which tribe? is the original great you gotta be pretty great <laughs> to have all all this territory and how does this connect with the ania the ania mythical straits of ania so all this is that Rusha flow. This is at the British Museum again, 1530, Marco Polo's Asia, showing this new land connection through what they call now the Bering Strait to the land of the Prester John. And all this is that Rusha, so it's connected directly to the land of Prester John. 1530, British Museum, Prester John is not very far from Mexico. Prester John is not far from Mozak, Moses, Meshi, Moshe, Mosaka. Asia connects to Prester John through Ania, which is the Ania kingdom. Ana, all David flow, all Rusha flow. Rusha is the land of Prester. All this is connected with the three India. God, let's go. Let's go. Popping off, man. <laughs> so Kazaria is Mazaka. Ka. Mazaka, ancient city, what is now Kazari, Turkey. Hellenistic and Roman times, the city was an important stop over for merchants headed to Europe on the ancient Silk Road. Yeah. <laughs> Because we talk Mazaka, Mozak, the founder. Why did they take this empire out? The Byzantine Empire, that is, in 1453. Now, that's two or one year. Only one year after the Papal Bull, 1452, doomed diverses. Saying subjugate all these Saracens. Saracens. We're talking to Andrew. Talking Hashira. Talking you. Talking the town. Scotland, right? <laughs> okay. This Silk Road flow is heavy. Because that's what it's all about, this connection, this Genghis Khan, Silk Road. And you, you've you just connected, my naga, the Silk Road directly with Moses, directly with Mazaka. And you don't even know it yet. <laughs> the Silk Road is an ancient Moses flow. Genghis Khan is hijacking it. The city was the capital of Cappadocia. And Armenian and Cappadocian kings regularly fought over control of the strategic city. Why did they 
take out the Byzantine. They were fighting over control of the strategic city. The city was renowned for its bishops of both in Greek Orthodox and Armenian apostolic faith after the Battle of Manzikert, where the Byzantine Empire lost to the incoming Seljuk Empire. Turco Persian, my naga. Turks, right? Now we're talking to more and more war, even over there, even in Turkey, Russia, over there. When we talk Russia again, Russia, Turkey, all the same thing. I want you to stay connected with the roots real tight on this one. Press their one on one. We're talking to picks, right? <laughs> the A rabbis, the rabbis, right? The rabbis, air proper. Roos is the truth. It's going to connect you to some things. Cappadocia, right? These kings, these cons fought over control of the strategic city. Why is it strategic? Because of this Silk Road. The Silk Road made it strategic. The Silk Road was a network of Eurasian or just Asian <laughs> trade routes or Russian, Russian, Rus trade routes active from the second century BC until the middle of the 15th century. And what happened dead smack in the middle of the 15th century? The fall of Constantinople. The fall of Constantinople is the fall of the Khan. The fall of the Khan, also known as the conquest of Khan, Constantinople. <laughs> was the capture of the capital of the Byzantine Empire by the Ottoman Empire, my night. More and more war. So whether we're talking 1492, Columbus, and all the way up to the Comse and Chicamago in the 1700s and pieces, treaties of peace and friendship, 1787. For hundreds of years, it was already popping with these Moors, man. They were taking down all the strategic areas from here to there, from this Russia to that Russia, from this Asia to that Asia, from this Asia to our India Superior, connected through a trade route or a Strait of Antioch, all the way to this connection with this uh, Mazaka flow. All Russia, <laughs> all Russia, all connected to the Mediterranean flow. Kazaria is Mazaka, everything they do with the Silk Road, right? Cappadocia, something called the Battle of Manzikert, fought between the Byzantine Empire and the Seljuk Empire. Manzikert. This is what happened to Mazaka. This is what happened to Mosak, who, Mazaka, man, Mosak, Moses. The Battle of Malazgurt was fought between the Byzantine Empire and the Seljuk Empire. Remember these Seljuk, these sultans were paying tribute to Prester John, Khan of Khans, Rex Negus, King of King. We're going to get on this queen named King because it's all connected at the same thing, and it's all the same thing. Queen of Georgia. Background Tony Dynasty, let's go. Theme of Iberia, the decisive defeat of the Byzantine army and the capture of the Emperor Romanos IV, Dio Diogenesis played an important role in undermining Byzantine authority in Anatolia and Armenia and allowed for the gradual Turkification or Islamification, morification of Anatolia. Many of the Turks who had been traveling westward during the 11th century saw the victory of Manzikur as an entrance to Asia Minor, or we're just talking Asia Major, India, Superior. 
we just getting here a little, there a little, just so you know it's going all the way up. So this battle of Manzik Kurt signified this major loss in the fall of Constantinople. Fall of the Khan. The city fell on the 29th of May, 1453. Right. When was the uh, when was the Doom Diverses, man? I just want to compare these dates. And I want to ask, man, you know, is it something or is it nothing? Okay. Oh, 1452. Pope Nicholas IV issued the Papal Bull. Doom Not Verses on the 18th of June, 1452. Telling them to invade, search out, capture, vanquish, subdue all Saracens. A Saracen's head. A nigga's head, right? But this is a nigga all nigga war going on. A naga all naga war. But really, it's dragging on serpent war. Because the serpents are invading the dragons. So this city fell. Constantinople. Talking Byzantine. We're still talking Khazaria. 1453. Papu Bull, Doom Diverses. 1452. So... One year after this is put into play. Hey, go invade, search out, vanquish, capture, all that. <laughs> Take their kingdoms, right? What kingdom are we talking about? Your kingdoms, man. Managa, your kingdoms, your stuff, your things, man. 1453 is the fall of the Byzantine, the attacking Ottoman army. The military structure established by Muhammad II, otherwise known as Muhammad the Conqueror. <laughs> Sultan Muhammad II. It's a more on more war, dog. And then Columbus comes over here 40 years later, man. Who, who helped him over here <laughs> if they were already taking down our Nagas over there? But over there is over here. We're just talking Russia. And it's all connecting. And the, uh, all right. Okay, slow down. Kazaria is Mazaka. Mazaka, well, you know, Philostrogus, <laughs> Ben let us know in his ecclesiastical history, Philostrogus was hence both Eka. Medical and local, he included many tidbits of odd information about biblical events in the Roman Empire. I'm reading out of Becoming Christian, the conversion of Roman Cappadocia. Yeah, we just talked Cappadocia, right? By Raymond Van Dam. We're talking Mozart, the founder, Moshe, Mexico, right? He included many tidbits of odd information about biblical events, really. What about the biblical events, Philostrosius, when he mentioned Mazaka? Let's get it bigger. When he mentioned Mazaka, the original name for the city that eventually became Kazari. Stop. We just also confirmed that. That Kazari is Mazaka. And it's an important stop. Uh, for merchants headed to Europe on the Silk Road. And that the capital of the city is Cappadocia. When he mentioned Mazaka, the original name for the city that became Kazaria, he noted that this name was derived from Mosak, the founder of the Cappadocians. So you went from Kazaria to Mazaka to Mosa, a person named Mosa, right? 
founder of the Cappadocians. Most socks name suggests some sort of Shemitic derivation. So we're back to talking Shemites and Hebrews and Moses <laughs> and his reputation as the founder of the Cappadocian seems to hint at a foundation. So blended within the name, which you would never get from going to Wiki, just oh, the Kazaria is Mazak. We're talking Ka, <laughs> we're talking Zars, right? Czar means king, Khan, 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 okay. Well, Khan, we're just talking to Kama, ka, Kamahama, Kamehameha, the key, right? The energy, the Ka, the Ka. They got dragon balls. We're just talking dragons, all right? The Ka. The Ka, the dragon, the czar, the Khan, the Mazaka is the Ka, is the Moshe who got the dragon drop, right? Who got the, the Khan drop, right? The Mazaka, original Mazaka, the original name for the city became Kazaria. The name suggests some Semitic derivation, Mosak. Mosak's name suggests some sort of schematic derivation and his reputation as the founder of the Cappadocians seems to hint at a foundation legend for the region that was older than the adaptation of Greek myths, man, Greek mythology. This area is older than the adaption or adoption of Greek myth. You got to be talking ancient antiquity. You got to be talking foundational legend Moses and then they scratch it out of history became Kazari <laughs> Kazari but you would never know that Kazari connects all the way back to Moshe or the Kazar Caesar oh, you want a Caesar salad or a Kazar salad in the early Roman Empire, people outside Cappadocia, right? That's the capital of Khazar, capital. People outside of Cappadocia had heard of Mosak. The Jewish historian Josephus even tried to hide him in biblical genealogies. We got that with this Meshach, right? He says, for those that are able to understand, it's an ancient mark on their denomination. We're talking to Tao. This is one-on-one. Let's go. <laughs> Although Mosak is an intriguing primal ancestor. <laughs> How did Mosak become a primal ancestor? I thought we were just talking Kazari. Capital city of Ka Cappadocia. Mazaka is Mosak is an intriguing primal ancestor. He unfortunately remains completely obscure. You don't know nothing about most. Not Mosak. You just know about Kazari today. Cappadocia. Philostrogius, in fact, knew so little about the legend that he could not match up the consonants and vowels in order to make sense of the postulated link between the city's name of Mazaka and Mosak's name. So he shrugged off and invented, <laughs> listen up, invented a makeshift phonetic transfer. After the passage of time, the city was called Mazaka through a swerving. It went from Moses to Mazaka through a swerve. <laughs> Moses is Mosa. Moshe, Meshi, Meshika. The Rush connects directly with Meshika. <laughs> The Rus, Lady Rus in there. Yeah. Lady Rus in there connect directly with the Meshika. Because the Meshika, <laughs> Preston John, it's not very far from Mexico. 
right? <laughs> and it's not very far from Roosh because <laughs> the Roosh is on fire. Annie, I will be over here, right? Connected with Mexico, right? See clearly yet? Kazari, Kazar, Mazaka, through a swerving. Makeshift, phonetic transfer. After the passage of time, the city was called Mazaka through a swerving. In the later Roman Empire, all that survived of whatever legends there may have been about Mosak were his name, his reputation, and his enigmatic connection with the name of the city. The myth of Mosak, the founder, was a lost memory. So when they invaded, when they searched out, when they captured, in 1452, one year before they took out the Byzantine, which includes Kazari, took the kingdoms, the dukedoms, the principalities, the dominions, the possessions, and all movable and all immovable. That's everything, man. <laughs> they took everything movable and everything that ain't movable, and they gave all these things, possessed them and reduced us to perpetual slavery. That's forever servitude to them. And they applied and appropriate to themselves and their descendants, successors. All of our kingdoms, dukedoms, counties, principalities, dominions, possessions, and goods, and they converted the converts, right? They, their missionaries converted us to their use, to their profit. And they acquire and they possess our islands, our lands, our harbors, our seas. And they pertain them to King Alfonso and his successors. Your kingdoms, your dukedoms, your principalities, all your movable and immovable goods, everything, everything. 1452, that's what the Pope did. <laughs> it's a papal bull. 1452. Fall of Constantinople in 1453. Back it up. Byzantine Empire. The Byzantine Empire, also referred to as the Eastern Roman Empire or Byzantine. So this is a different Roma. Remember, Rema, Rema means pomegranate, right? Let's go. Continuation of the Roman Empire in its eastern provinces during late antiquity and the Middle Ages. Capital city was Constantinople. We just talked about the fall of Constantinople. To the Ottomans, man. The same crescent with a star, right? The same, you know, Moorish situation, right? North Africa, right? <laughs> Can't make this up. So this is pretty much Moab versus Israel right here in your face in 15, or excuse me, the 15th century, but 1453. 1453, one year after this papal bull to invade you, search you out, capture you, vanquish you. Who? All Saracens. A Saracen's head, boss. Take the Naga's head, the red ruddy Naga. Take Israel, lost tribes of Israel. We are the Saracen. The Rus is on fire. We're talking about the clan. And Rus went against the Ottoman Turks or the Moorish. And this more and more war been on and popping, man. They helped him find Kama, 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 Kame, Kameha, Meha. They helped him find Kameha, Meha, man. Whose name is what? David. This is Khan Dawi, right? <laughs> His name is David. I can't make this up. I can't make this up. 
just let you know that he didn't forget who he was. The fall of the Constantinople, capital of the Byzantine, to the Ottomans in 1453 is huge. During most of its existence, the empire remained the most powerful economic, cultural, military force. They got that car, they got that key. In Europe, the terms Byzantine Empire and Eastern Roman Empire were coined after the end of the realm. So they weren't called that during, they were called that afterwards. Its citizens continued to refer to the empire simply as the Roman Empire and to themselves as Romans, even in Turkey. <laughs> Romani, Roma, Romani, pomegranate, promised land, a term which Greeks continued to use for themselves into Ottoman times. Although the Roman state continued and its traditions were maintained, modern historians distinguish Byzantium from its earlier incarnation because it was centered on Constantinople, oriented towards Greek rather than Latin culture and characterized by Eastern Orthodox Christian and dodge your own eye check, man. This is them, you know, bringing in <laughs> just a full-fledged invasion with their JC. When Nagas wasn't rocking like that here. The fall of Constantinople, which occurred in May 29, 1453, was the final phase. Final phase. This was the finale of the Byzantine. More and more war with these Ottoman Turks. From 1265, look at the date. Genghis Khan invades Preston John 1202. Now you got Kublai and all this popping off. This pops off the beginning of this Ottoman war with the Byzantine back in the Kublai Khan, Genghis Khan wars. And concludes, this section concludes in 1453, but it continues though, Managa, because the treaties continue to be put on you. These are also the Byzantines. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All this is the same family. Whether you're in Russia here or Russia there, land of Rus there, land of Rus there, America here, America there, it's all the same connection. They want the land for Maxim. They want the land for Atlantis. <laughs> nah, man. So we put it together, man, for a while. The myth of Mosak, the founder, was a lost memory, a fragment of an abandoned past, a casualty of the adoption of Greek mythology. They just told you all this became Greek centered and all that. Afterwards, the imposition of Roman rule or the expansion of Christianity. It's talked about the Orthodox invasion or expansion of Christianity and a society that defined itself in terms of Greekness, Romanness, or Christianity, most likely the founder had become meaningless. They wouldn't make their people meaningless, Monaga. They would make you meaningless. But again, we're just talking Mosak, founder of the Cappadocians, fall of Constantinople, man. Kazaria. whose capital city is Cappadocia. Mazaka, through a swerving, <laughs> through a swerving, a makeshift phonetic transfer, Mazaka through a swerving. <laughs> but it was originally Mosak. We're talking Lazars and Eleazars. Eleazar, the high priest, is the Lazar. The Lazar <laughs> is the Khazar, the Khazaria. The Khazaria is the Lazar, 
is the Eleazar. Hawa, El Hawa. Help him. Hawa helps. Even with the czar title. See what we had it. A person appointed by government to advise on and coordinate policy in a particular area. These are all newer definitions, 1917 and all that. But an emperor or king, the former emperor of Russia. You can't be a true con if you're not appointed, you know what I'm saying? Directly by the priesthood. And the priesthood has everything to do with the Lazar. Hawa has helped. Is the Kazar. Is the Mazak. Is <laughs> Tara Santa. Wow. <laughs> but now we're talking Maroni again. <laughs> Holy land. Through a swerving. Intriguing primal ancestor, foundational legend, Mazaka, the original name for the city that became Kazaria, noted that this name was derived from Mozak, the founder of the Cappadocians. Okay. Cappadocia, capital city, Mazak. Interesting thing when we talk about Istanbul, like we said, you know, now Istanbul's the center of a lot of this, you know, flow, this Ottoman flow and all that. But Istanbul, <laughs> notice the name though, Istanbul. <laughs> Hebrew and in, in Hebrew, the city was sometimes referred to as Kush, <laughs> Kush Tandina. Man, I mean, okay, I think we get somewhere. So where's Istanbul? <laughs> Anything to do with Kush. I mean, I had to go to the Hebrew for it. <laughs> but that's an interesting trivia fact. Istanbul, originally called Kush. They call it Kushtandina. Kushtandina Rabati. Are we talking about them Arabs and them rabbis? We're talking Hebrew. Literally Great Kush or Great Kushtandina or certain to Kush Ta. Istanbul is Kush, man. Kush Ta. Where's the original Istanbul? You think it's right here? Why they have to put their bull on it? Why they put their bull on it? All right. Just rounding some bases, man. Press the one on one. Lego. Hano. Hey, just call me Hano, man. Just call me Hano. <laughs> Probably due to a distorted pronunciation of Judeo, man. Cut it, man. Cut it, man. Present day Israel it has virtually disappeared. So they don't use this name, Kush, anymore. It has virtually disappeared, replaced by the Hebrew transliteration of the Turkish Istanbul. They transliterated out of Kush, man. <laughs> they don't use that Kush Tandina no more, huh? I wonder why. They don't want this connection. And you're going to keep seeing this rum or rummy, roomy title come up. They're going to connect it with the King, King Dynasty. Of course, we're just talking Khan. But yeah, this rum title keeps coming up too. This roomy, remy, roomy. Let's go. Aqua Tamar is a special aqua. They're not going to give you no real pictures of her, but uh, <laughs> we're talking a copper color con. And I mean con. Because in her own right, her title is con. Quite 
Queen of Georgia. Remember the Voiny manuscript written in that Georgia language, right? So Tamar was proclaimed heir and co-ruler by her reigning father, George III. Now these are the righteous Georgies. You know, you got the hijacked Georgias, you got righteous Georgias. You know, at least they're under this cold keeping family. You know what I'm saying? So these Georgias, you know, you can connect them to these bragging Tonys, right? <laughs> and the bragging Tony dynasty connect themselves to Israel. Eighth King of Georgia, 1156 to 1184. So anything pre-1200s, you know what I'm saying, that's connected with this Georgia flow, this Byzantine flow, Mazaka, all this, um, you know, this has a lot of Israelite vibration to it, you know what I'm saying? He became king when his father Demetrius the first died, 1156, which was preceded by his brother's revolt against their father in 1154. So a brother revolted against their father. It kind of sounds like the David Absalom situation. His reign was part of what would be called the Georgian Golden Age, a historical period in the high Middle Ages. So these Golden Ages, another hint, you're talking Israelites, man. Reached his peak of military power development. George was the father of Queen Tamar the Great. Back it up. Again, Bragatoni dynasty, a royal dynasty, which reigned in Georgia from the Middle Ages until the 19th century, 1800s, when it's all happened. Being among the oldest extant Christian or Hebrew, you know, because they just replacing the real. Labeling everything Christianity to hide the Hebrewism of it all. Ruling dynasties in the world in modern usage, the name of the dynasty is sometimes Hellenized, Greek eyes, referred to as the Georgian Bragratids, also known in English as the Bragatians. And I'm going to leave the link so you can dig on it further because it gets real deep into these Bragantonis, man. I just wanted to, you know, curve through this, man, as we go into Press the 102 exclusive at 432 the drop.com but uh all right so george III, father of tamar also called khan tamar was proclaimed heir and co-ruler by her reigning father george III, 1178 but she faced significant opposition from the aristocracy aristocracy upon her ascension to full ruling powers after george's death course you know what i'm saying so tamar was successful in neutralizing this opposition and embarked on an energetic foreign policy aided by the decline of the hostile seljuk turks here come these turks it's turks here it's turks there it's turks everywhere it's moors there it's moors there it's moors all the time jamming up these ruling royal dynasties now you got tamar got to deal with these turks man <laughs> it's cold turkeys man cold turkeys now they said um and again thanksgiving they say it's about you know slicing up these turks or slicing the turkeys you know however their christian flow is it uh today but they said she had some some beef some opposition right some ops she had some ops right tamar has some ops <laughs> okay so how does she defeat these ops i mean she had to get allies relying on military power elite tomorrow was able to build on the successes of her predecessors to consolidate an empire which dominated the caucasus so are these white people even caucasians because the caucasus belong to these asians these russians until it's collapsed under the mongol attacks Mongol attacks. We're talking Genghis Khan, 1202. It seems like Queen Tamar in this neck of the, in this neck of the woods, Queen Tamar was holding down the Khan ship during the worst of times. <laughs> her husband died, or her father died. Then she was married twice. Her first was more like a forced marriage thing. 
1185 to 87 to the Roos Prince Yuri. Now check it out. They brought in the Roos, right? I, I can't make this up. Keevan Roos. All right, so she gets married in, you know, or married to a Roos, right? I just said this is a Roos Russia situation. Of course, you know, it has to be a royal family, you know, connection. You know, she wouldn't just be marrying anybody. So he's, this is Yuri now. We talked about before. Is this the same Uriah? <laughs> All right, just think about Uriah, King David, Second Samuel eleven. We're gonna get this again, but Uriah slept at the door. He ends up, you know, beginning killed because David wants Bathsheba. Right? He's watching her bathe and all this stuff. Okay, so for one on one, I gotta at least one more time give one more hard push to innocent King David. <laughs> Cause I think they put some stank on David and they duplicated this Yuri situation. And Yuri, who is supposed to be the husband of Bathsheba, who then gets put in the front line for war, ends up dying. And then David marries Sheba, the first, I believe, uh, son gets, he dies as a child, as a curse type of thing. And then here comes Solomon. And I said, why would the most richest king of all be blessed out of this union of this adulterous situation if this was the case? But David later says, man, my hands are clean. You know, in his Psalms, he's like, man, you know, I ain't sinned against nobody but Hua. <laughs> so that was his time to confess. But he said, I, I didn't sin against nobody but the creator. So did he sin against Uriah? Or did they put the story in to smut his name up? He comes from a sinless man. Jesse, he's a sinless man. Uh, Kiliab is a sinless man, right? <laughs> Kiliab, second son of Daniel, or David, also known as Daniel. Second son of King David, one of three or one of four ancient Israelites who died without sin, including Benjamin, right? 12 tribes of Israel, right? Benjamin, Jesse, who's the father, Yashai, father of David, Abram, who's the father of Moshe. But somehow Moshe got some smut on his name. Or David got some smile on his name. But then Daniel, his son, his bond, is a sinless naga who died without sin. But David got some smile on his name. It seemed like someone trying to put some smut on David's name. Thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead. And we compared the Sheba flow, Bathsheba flow with his queen Tamar flow. And he said, is this the same flow? <laughs> is Bathsheba Queen Tamar? I mean, queen, queen of the kings. Tamar the Great. She was regarded as a wise patron of culture, art, sciences, a devoted follower of the Christian church, man, dodge your own hijack, because the more that comes out, the more, you know, they're just related to this Far East Orient, you know what I'm saying, situation that was nothing to do with Christianity. A formidable warrior queen, we're talking high queen. In her own day and throughout history, Georgia was governed by several queens, but only Tamar was given the title Mep or King. She was dubbed Queen of the Kings. Glory of the world, kingdom, faith, queen of the queens. Sound like the queen of the dragon drop Game of Thrones. Daughter of King George III, third queen, Berku Khan, Berdu Khan, right? Khan of Georgia, 
Tomorrow was born 1166. This is right around the Presta flow, David Sauslin flow. Her status as King George III's heir was unique. A woman had never governed Georgia before, but her father determined in designating her his heir, declaring it matters not if a lion is male or female. While he was still alive, he proclaimed Tamar queen and vowed that they would reign jointly. George III thought that by doing so, he would be able to teach Tamar the art of monarchy while also securing her succession. Secession. Tamar, on the other hand, gave her first political test just or yeah, gave her first political test just after her father's death in 1184. She forged connections with other senior royals as well as the head of the Georgian church, Michael the Fourth, Mar Marion these to strengthen her claim to the throne. Tamar was pushed into an unhappy marriage. Now compare this with the Bathsheba David flow in 2 Samuel. Except, you know, David's accused of murdering Uriel, Uriah. Or yeah, Uriah. But here she marries Princess Uri. <laughs> compare the Uri, the Uri flow with this Uriah. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she made lamentation for her husband. Really? And then went to marry David, right? Come on, man. They try to make, they trying to put smut on both of them. They they trying to make Queen Tamar seem like she just going to just bathe in the public <laughs> and then say, oops, nah, man. Something they right. Something they right. Talking to Roos, right? Kiev and Roos, land of Roos. Which means we got to be talking about Lady Roos. Lady Hannah Roosadan. House of Ann Ross, the Ross clan Ross, Lady Roos, maybe the only surviving picture on the internet, man. They seem like they took a lot of links down. Roosadon. Rusada, Queen of Georgia, Bagra and Tioni of Georgia, 1194, died 1250, 1245, daughter of David Sauslin and Queen Tamar. So Rusadan is the daughter of Tamar, daughter of King George, right? We, we in genie.com now. You're going to see, keep seeing this Osetia title as well. The Burdu Khan or the Goran Duke of Osetia. You're going to see the Allen title pop up. The Osetia title pop up. These are all your family titles. Tamar the Great. Tamar is the wife of David Sauslin. David. So <laughs> they're ruling side by side. Son of Jadaran. Jadaran is the Preston child, remember? Because David Sauslin is also the son of Raja Haraja Jadaran, except they put the D on it. But here we know we're talking Preston John. Who or who is Preston John? Husband of Lady Hannah here. Here it says the husband of Princess Rusadan, which gives us the confirmation that Rusadan is Hannah. Hannah is a Rus. 
But Rusadad is also. Oh, yeah. The name of. The daughter. So the daughter of David is also David and Tamar is also a Rusa dad. And so is her grandmama. All right. Then you got Prince Tamar, daughter of David, the fourth of Georgia. Queen consort of Servan. Daughter of David, the fourth. Okay. <laughs> So it keeps going. This Tamar tile. This is an earlier Tamar. Same Bagatoni dynasty. David the fourth, son of George the second. They're gonna keep going back from the, you know, back to the Rusa dance. This, you know, different family trees of the same family. Princess Rusa Dan Bagatoni. So that's the wife of Jadaran or Presta John. Okay. Putting it all together. Who's also Lady Hannah or Kana. <laughs> okay. I said Hannah <laughs> or Kana. Come on, man. I'm out of here, baby. I'm out of here, baby. So Hannah in Hebrew is also spelled with a C-K or a K, or C-H or K. Kana. So when you see the Hannah title, it is the Khan title. Like a Davida David flow or Anna. Anna also is the Khan or Ania or Kana or the land of Canaan. Put an N at the end. Back to the Hanan flow. Books of Samuel. You got Hannah is the mother of the prophet Samuel. Whoa. <coughs> Shalom. All right. A lot of talking, my not. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't put the Samuel flow together because we just talked in the second Samuel. <laughs> when you got this Uriah flow, this Yuri Uriah David flow. And Samuel, you know, has a lot to do with this anointing of David. Okay. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. And Hannah is the mother of the prophet Samuel. Also the Khan. Also Rusadan. the wife of Preston John. Bagrin Tioni, right, <laughs> of Georgia. Like I said, this rum title keeps coming up. Remind me of Rome, like, like Roma, Romani. Also Rumi, Rome. <laughs> Come on, man, Red Mine, man. Pomegranate, Promised Land. Tamar. Now, we know she's the wife of David Sauslin. This one has a different title for David Sauslin. They call him Suleiman Parawana Paravane, Mongol Chancellor in the court of Seljuk. Because this is during the Babylonian, Babylonian exile, man. So the same Raja Haraja, whose son is David, Preston John, son is David. His brother is Soli. Oh man, okay, okay. <laughs> Take it real slow.
David saw them, right? David saw them. His wife is tomorrow. But not all the links are going to give you that. David saw them here. They don't even tell you who his wife is. So, you you know, you got to connect all these different titles of these Davids. You know what I mean? Or, you know, names and different spellings. Same son of Jadarondo. Son, David Sosland, son of Jadaron. Prince of John. Prince Jadaron. Rusadan is tomorrow. Or excuse me, Hannah. And Hannah and Presto or Rusadan <laughs> and Jadara, they have David Sosland. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Who's also called Solima? Because it's like Preston John, he's the emperor of Soli, title Suli, 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 father of Solomon the first, who would be the brother of David Sosna, also a Sulema. And he would be chancellor in this court as an exilarch. In Babylon. So you got this Georgia Babylon flow. Mongol counselor <laughs> in Babylon. Got it. All right. So amazing. Tomorrow the Great is all we're talking about. She had to fight against these Turks, right? It's more and more war. Tamar married twice, her first union being to the Rus Prince Yuri or Uriah. <laughs> Uriah the Hittite. Whom she divorced. So instead of David killing him in this story, he gets divorced and expelled from the country. So he did something shady. He gets divorced and kicked out, defeating his subsequent coup attempts. So he tried, oh, okay, well, he got kicked out for trying to take over. But this version of the story, he's just a righteous servant and David just takes his woman, you know what I'm saying? Like, and this story with this David Tamar situation, which seems to resemble, you know, this Bathsheba flow. It's a righteous coup, or I mean, it's a coup and she righteously expels her. <laughs> and uh, here comes her second husband, the Allen Prince David Sauce. Like I said, Osetia titles, Allen titles popping up everywhere Alania medieval kingdom now you're talking Persia Ossetians they got all this over there now northern Caucasus roughly in the location of later day Kasasia right, modern day Ossetia Alania from an independence from its independence from the Khazars in the ninth century until its destruction by the Mongol invasion, 1238. Again, all happening right after this Genghis Khan flow. And by the time, you know, you got these, you know, Khazars later, you don't know which, which tribe is under these titles at this point. But at some point, someone under the title or the Alania title wanted independence from this Khazar title. Now, what time is this? Who's who's holding the titles down? We don't know, but we see that the same Mongol invasion is up against Tamar with the Seljuk Turks, the Ottoman Turks, the Byzantine, all this flow, the same Genghis Khan flow, 13th century, 14th century flow is overlapping with this Turkish overthrow, Ottoman flow, and the fall of Constantinople, 1453, Byzantine flow. It's all one flow.
Prince Yuri initially, she was unhappy, right? It's unhappy marriage. She later publicly accused him of drinking and sodomy. The nobility was obliged to sanction her divorce and the humiliated Yuri was deported to Constantinople. Despite Yuri's attempts to return again, Tamar found herself a new suitor, the island prince David Sosling. David Sosling is the son of Roger here, Roger Chola II, Prester John. And it might be the one, it might be the one that Genghis Khan rolled up on and they fought a war personally with. You know what I'm saying? But I believe this is the David right here in America. <laughs> Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, America, um, that went head up with Genghis Khan, man. Think he went head up with Genghis Khan, man. <laughs> and eventually led to this fall in 1453 after this doom diverses Papal Bull. Papal Bulldog to take down all y'all. Ravishing mammals issue Vatican Papals, tricking Adam and Eve. To buy the Vatican apple. David Sauslin, son of the Preston. Now said, uh, lever leveraging her new husband, previous experience as a military commander to develop and implement daring initiatives. She also had two children by David Sauslin, a descendant of the noble Bragantoni family. So the Bragantoni family by default must be the same family as the Preston family, the Chola family, the Soli, Soliman family, the Israelite family. That's why you got all these Davids and Davids and Davids and Anans and Anias. Let's go quickly, man. Let's go quickly. So I'm going to leave these links for you tomorrow. The great George's queen of kings. <laughs> they keep saying she ruled in the golden age, man. Queen of Kings, glory of the world, kingdom and faith. Georgia's powerful noble saw tomorrow's soul role as an opportunity to wrench back some of the autonomy they had lost under her ancestor, King David IV, known as the Builder. So this is David the Builder. She's the daughter of David the Builder. So not only did she marry a David, She's the daughter of David the Builder. <laughs> you got to follow the Davids in this flow. Let's just keep going. A crazy real life story of George's only queen. <laughs> They didn't have the records of her fighting battle, man, but you know she was there. That's why they call her Warrior Queen. Centuries after her death, the sainthood was made official. So now she's a saint, just like all your other cons. We became saints to them. And look at these dates again. Her reign lasted almost 30 years, and after the sack of Constantinople, sack of the Khan, Byzantine, same flow, 1204, that's two years after Genghis Khan invaded King David right here on this soil, man. She got caught in that same vacuum. King Tamar filled the power vacuum, became an essential power at the crossroads of East and West. Unfortunately, her son was unable to maintain Georgia's stronghold. In 1220, Georgia fell to the Mongol Empire. This is Genghis Khan, Kublai Khan. More and more war, man. More and more war. I'm talking tomorrow. Tomorrow. Saint Tamara, Queen of Georgia. <laughs> George of the Roosh. George the Roosh.
<laughs> Having taken off her shoes, Queen Tamara climbed the hill of the Matakini Church of Tato Kos and knelt before the icon of the Most Holy Theotoko. I mean, are these facts, man? <laughs> After the initial victory of the Georgian army launched into a series of triumphs over the Turks. Here we go. All right, we're getting the babies out the bathwater. Neighboring countries began to regard Georgia as the protector of the entire trans Caucasus. By the beginning of the 13th century, 1200s, Georgia commanded a political authority that was recognized by both the Christian West and the Muslim East. East. Georgia's military success alarmed the Islamic world. Right, so tomorrow coming up, got them all shook. It alarmed Islam. Sultan Ruk al Din was certain that a united Muslim force would definitely decide the issue of power in that region. And his enormous armies marched on Georgia 1203. <laughs> they came closer and closer, right? John, the press, the press to John, a supposed Christian king and priest, man. <laughs> the Hebrew Khan, let's go. Of a medieval kingdom in the interior of Asia, I'm on biblical cyclopedia. The locality of which is vague and undefined. In the 11th and 12th centuries, the Nestorian missionaries penetrating into Eastern Asia made conversions among the Karyat Crete. Shout out Big Crit, man. He know his history, man. Big Crit Tartars, man. Which, according to the earlier reports, are said to have included the Khan or sovereign of the tribe. The Khan is the sovereign. American. They took the title American, which means they took your sovereignty. Ong or Ong Khan is Wang or King. Wang, John, is Ong. Who resided at Kara Koram, back to the Kara, back to the like, Karakawa, back to the Kara Key, Cherokee, Kara Koram, and to whom the afterwards celebrated Genghis Khan was tributary. Genghis Khan stole this Khan. This name, the Syrian missionaries translated by analogy with their own language, converting Ong into Jakanan or John or Johan, right? <laughs> Johanatan, <laughs> Jonathan. <laughs> hey, let's go. Shout out to the bro. So, Yonatan or Yakatan or Yucatan. Damn, that sound like Joktan, huh? Jakana. <laughs> and rendering Khan by priest. Again, Khan means priest. Where my Khan's at? Amaru Khan, Khan up, priest up, and their reports to the Christians of the West. <laughs> Accordingly, their royal convert figured as at once a priest and the sovereign of rich and magnificent kingdom. They took your kingdoms, your principalities, <laughs> your immovable goods, man. Genghis Khan, having thrown off his allegiance, a war ensued. So he threw off his allegiance. He threw off his loyalty to the Prester, to the Khan, to the priest Khan. A war ensued, which ended in the defeat and death of Ong Khan in 1202. Whoa. So when we surf in this wave, and they keep bringing us to these dates, it's 1203, 1204. Now they say this united Muslim force definitely could definitely decide the issue of power in the region and his enormous armies marched on Georgia in 1203. I'm just saying in 1202 is when Genghis Khan defeated the Prester, they said, right? Or his son, Dawid, or David Sauslin, son of the Prester. I mean, which one was it? They don't know, but it's all happening. It's all happening. 
<laughs> so here comes tomorrow, 1202, fighting the same forces. Having encamped near Bassiani, Rook, a messenger to Queen Tamar, was an audacious demand to surrender without a fight. In reward for her obedience, the Sultan promised to marry her on the condition that she embraced Islam. Come on, man. You want to Islam us today? You try to Islam the Queen Tamar? Wife of Dawi? Daughter of David the Builder? They clearly weren't Islam. That's why you Islam them. It's a more and more war, these Turks, man. Seljuks, Ottomans. <laughs> We're talking Moab in there. However, he stated that if Tamar were to cleave to Christianity, he would number her among the other unfortunate concubines in his harem. When the messenger relayed, this is just straight disrespect they bring in this queen, right? The noble man was so outraged that he slapped him in the face, knocking him unconscious. Like, man, embrace Islam. You must be unconscious. At, at Queen Tamar's command, the court generously bestowed gifts upon the ambassador and sent him away with the Georgian envoy and letter of reply. Your proposal takes into consideration your wealth and the vastness of your armies, but fails to account for divine judgment. While I place my trust not in any army or worldly thing, but in the right hand of the almighty power, Hawa, and the infinite aid of the Tao, which they call the cross sticks. We're talking the Tao. <laughs> the Tao, my naga, last letter in Hebrew, the sign, the mark, the covenant. Boy got knocked un unconscious asking her to embrace Islam. Brother, don't Islam us today. You tried to force it on the queens. You married into our mothers to get your nobility. We see clearly. Got slapped in the head bone. <laughs> your proposition, man, it, you're talking about wealth, but you ain't talking about your, div your divine judgment with a while with our creator. Well, I place my trust not in any worldly thing or army but in the right hand of the almighty power of Wah and the infinite aid of the Tao, which you curse. <laughs> the will of Hawa, not your own, shall be fulfilled. The judgment of Hawa and not your judgment shall reign. I'm talking about the queen, man. <laughs> queen tomorrow. Or... Gurku Hatun tomorrow. And instead of David the fourth the builder, they <clears throat> give this title for David as Gis Undi Kai 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 Kai. <laughs> Here goes this room or room, room. Mm. Also known as Meduditin Dimitri. And they even got a Muhammad title for him because of this whole Persian situation. So he would also be the Shah. The Shah is also the Tsar. So it appears that they even throw Muhammad titles on Israelites, man. Because she wouldn't be converting to Islam if she was already Islamic. So her daddy can't be representing Islam, but he's carrying a title under this, you know, Babylonian captivity and you know, all this situation so you know we're just dodging the hijacks okay and he's also the husband of Rusa dad oh man okay so back to the ruse let's keep going David Sarsland husband of Tamar got it got it Tamar, daughter of David IV, David the Builder. Got it, got it. Princess Rusa Dan, wife of Jadara, mother of David Sosley. <laughs> right, back to Tamar. Okay, got it. 
And then you got this Princess Yuri, which again, we compared to Uriah the Hittite. Did David slay a man or is it innocent? Are they, you know, a false witnessing on the bro? On the con, we? Saying he killed a man to smut his name up, saying Bathsheba's over here, taking the some bath in the open. You read the story, just bathing openly for everyone to see. Does that sound like the aqua? Or are they putting false witness and all that to create a story to smut up their name? When Uriah, Uriah, Uriah the Hittite could be Uri, right? Who got expelled because of some cool. They said sodomy, they said all kinds of things. He's the ex-husband of Tamar, right? Bagrantini, Tamar the Great. Uriah or Yuri? Uriah or Yuri? The nobility proposed Yuri or Uriah. Andre Vitz, Andre, like Han Roos, because he's a Roos, Kevin Roos, Duke. All right, but you got good Roos, bad Roos. You got good Israel, bad Israel. You know what I'm saying? So he was over there set tripping. This choice was supported by the Catholic Ghost Mikhail and Tamar's on Roos Dan, who was a powerful figure at the court. Yuri was fetched, and the two were wed with Tamar remaining the ruling monarch. So he was, you know, <laughs> he was second fiddle. He didn't like that. Yuri proved a successful military commander, which was especially valuable because Tamar usually only accompanied the troops partly without leading them into battle. However, the two did not get along well, and Yuri was reputedly debauched in frustration. Tamar requested and was granted an annulment. Man. And in comes Dawi. Suleiman offered that if Tamar converted to Islam, he would make her his wife, if not a concubine. Tamar had a large Georgian army assembled, and David Sauslin led it in victory over the several days long Battle of Bassini. We got to dig on that. 1202. Whoa. 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 So David went to war in 1202. The same way that they say Genghis Khan defeated the Uncon in 1202. But who's the Uncon for the dismount at this time? My goodness. David Sawson led him into victory at the Battle of Bassini in 1202. A Muslim attack, Genghis Khan. So now you see this Genghis Khan is synonymous with this Muslim flow, this Islam flow, the Kublai, all that hijack is synonymous with this Islam takeover. Counterattack several years later failed, and in 1206, Georgian forces occupy Erzy Kham and Kars. David Sauston died in 1207. Over here, it says the unk died in 1202. This is the same person, same thing. Let's go for the dismount. Prince of Alania. He's chiefly known for his military exploits during George's war against the Muslims. Against the Moors. That's why they don't want to talk, David. They don't want to talk David Sauce. Nah, son of the Preston. Nah, they don't want this conversation, man. <laughs> David Sauce, an Ossetian prince, military commander. <sighs> nah, they don't want that. Tomorrow's husband, let's go. The Georgian and Ossetian relations is far longer than just a century. They went through the most difficult transformation. They, this started when during the ancient times when Alans, the ancestors of the modern 
Ossetians living in the foothills of the Caucasian mountains frequently went through Dario George attacking the Cartley Iberian reign. They was, <laughs> they was going in on these Iberians, right? But this ended in friendly, allied, and even related dynastic relations between the two nations, Alania and George. One of the best examples of this was in 1188, David Sauslin, Tsarina, uh, Tsar, or <laughs> King Tamara's wife, or uh, husband, second husband, second husband being her spouse, gave him many opportunities to do a lot for the Georgian government. 1191, a group of courtiers disgruntled with the queen's policy called Prince Yuri, the husband of Tamar, back to Constantinople where he had been staying and stirred up a large-scale rebellion. So Yuri came to rebel. Is that why he got killed? Or did David just kill an innocent man on the front line like they say in 2 Samuel? So the messengers went, <clears throat> came, told David all that Joab had did. And the messenger said unto David, the men prevailed against us, came unto us, to the field we were upon them, even until the entrance at the gate and the shooters shot at your servants from off the wall. And some of the king's servants are dead and they and your servant Uriah the Hittite died. Then David said to the messengers, this Shall you say unto Joab, let not this thing displease you, for the sword devours in one manner or the other. Make, make your battle more strong against the city. Overthrow it. Encourage it. Is that what happened? Or did he rebel? Was there a rebellion with this Yuri? Because David Sauson was fighting against all these cell jugs, man. The powerful man was also highly educated, was distinguished for his many skills. Some historians say that David is the real author of the great epic poem, The Knight and the Panther Skin. Uh-oh, now we're talking Black Panthers, man. And it keeps saying he died in 1207. <laughs> this mountain right here, press the one-on-one bonus time, man. I hope you all just enjoy the flow from, for the bonus uh, the name George, we've been talking about this George title. Again, you got your righteous George and your hijack George. And I'm about to get on these flapjacks in real time, man. The biblical meaning for the name George. What is the meaning for George, man? They say one who walks the earth, a farmer. So you're talking about a husband, right? Like husbandry, one who is walking the earth, one who's farming the land, tilling the land. That's the title of George. So don't get it twisted when we talk these George titles, man. What did Dawi say about this, man? What did Dawi say? Be gracious unto me, O Hawa, according to your mercy, according to the multitude of your compassions, blot out my transgressions. Did he kill a man? Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions. I know what I've done. And my sin is ever before me against you. You only have I sinned. He didn't talk about killing a man. He said, against you only have I sinned. Now, you could translate that how you want to, but <laughs> what does he mean against the creator only? And if he did, he did. I mean, we, we know David is a warrior. You know, he kills men on the battlefield, but is he a murderer? Is he guilty of murder? Or are they being false witnesses against an innocent naga? Is he guilty of murder? And done that which is evil in your sight, that thou may be justified when you speak and be in the right. When you judge, behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desires truth in the inward parts. Make me, therefore, to know wisdom in my inmost heart. A while purge me with his sop, and I should, both, I should be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast crushed may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquity. Create me a clean heart, O Hawaii, and renew a steadfast ruach spirit within me. Cast me not away 
from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my of your salvation and let a willing Ruach uphold me. Then will I teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall return unto you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O Hawah. Hawah of my salvation, so shall my tongue sing aloud of your righteousness. Hawah open your open thou my lips and my mouth shall declare your praise for thou delight not in sacrifice else i would give it <laughs> nah we don't need to be sacrificing animals man <laughs> hawa's not delighting in that it's it's game over for that thou has no pleasure in burnt offerings man <laughs> The sacrifices of a while are a broken spirit and broken and contrite heart of a while thou would not despise. You remember the code, David said, blot out my transgressions. Cleanse me with a renewed spirit so that we are not putting no powers before a while, taking a while's name in vain. We keep our Shabbat. We honor our frame and our shape, our mother and our father. We're not murdering. We ain't sliding on each other no more. We're not committing adultery. We're keeping our oaths. We're not stealing from our brother, our sister. We're not bearing false witness. And we're not coveting our neighbor, our brother, anything of his, man, anything of our sisters. We're not coveting this. Now we popping off with thunder and lightning, man. So they invaded, they searched out, they get, they, they vanquished my naga, they subdued all Sarah's sons. Yeah, this is for the lady dragons on the wall. Hana, given name. Hannah, right? Kana. Favor, grace. He, Hawa, has favored me with a child which is Jewish, <laughs> Hebrew, grace. Yeah, man, the flower, yeah. The craft, Hawaiian, work, mori, to shine, glow. Man, my sister's got that glow. Give out love, radiance, man, we popping off. Cons, priest, Anna, Ania, also known as Lady, Gavaret, Hannah, right? Raja Raja Jadaran, first Presta, talking the Voinic manuscript, the Hebreo Georgian language, right? Indian language. Now we know we're talking the royal house. And his son, by his black Panian wife, was King Vikarama Panian. He had at least Three sons, right? We're talking about the Pandians, the Pandian Prester John. Three sons by his Hebrew wife, Lady Gavaret Hannah. And then we got David Sauslin popping off, the Exilar, Georgia. And he got a son, Hanan, or Hani, or Anion, Prince or King of the Hebrews and Tahama, and his son, Soliman, Soli, Hebrew prince of King of Telamas, Mary, Queen Lembu, Labana of Rubadi, High Amazon Queens, Hanan, Ania, Lady Geveret, Hannah, what's this Geveret title? The Geveret, Is the Gabareth. The Gabareth <laughs> for the dismount is the Gabareth, Lady Hannah. Or the Gavora. Oh boy. The Gabareth.
Let's get it. Queen. So the Lady Gabareth. Gabareth is the queen, my knock and the lady, right? <laughs> ka ka. Word, you know, we're just speaking Hebrew here, man. Lady, queen, right? Gavora, Gavora. First seraph, Sephirah of the Kabbalistic tree of life. So this queen is even connected with this tree of life, right? It is the second of the emotive attributes of the Sephirah. It sits below Bana, across from Kaset, and above Ha. I mean, you got to dig on the Kabbalistic tree of life, but Kavar is the essence of judgment. Didn't she say, hey, only the judgment of Hawa is what I care about, not your titles and your riches. She turned down Islam because of the judgment of Hawa. The essence of judgment and limitation and corresponds to all in the element of fire. My aquas are popping off. In the Bahir, it is written, and who are the officers? We learn that they, that there are three. Strength, Garvara, is strength. Fire is the officer of all the holy forms. Gavora is the officer of all the holy forms. We're talking about the Khan. <laughs> to the left of the blessed holy one, he is Gabriel. Gavora. It's associated with the color red. <laughs> Interesting, right? We're talking about the great fire of Hawaii. Surfing the wave in real time, man, in battle time. We can't talk fire without talking Kamehameha. Dragon balls, man. <laughs> Y'all think it's play play? These dragon ball heroes. We're talking that fire. We're talking lady dragons on the wall who got that car. That car. <laughs> meha, meha. <laughs> We're going to get back on our nobles, man. Our royals, man. Back to our royals. Back to our queens. Back to our Gavaras. Dragons on the wall. The Cherokee Dragos, the she, the key, the car that's separated from the rest of the hijacks. The Khazar, Khan, Kings, which is the Lazar, the El Lazar. Because the Khazar is a variant of the Lazar. We back, man. We're talking Eleazar, high priest, grandson of Air. We can't talk Air without talking Moshe. Foundational legend. Foundational legend for the region, older than the adoption of Greek myths. Moshe, Meshe. Josephus tried to put him in the genealogies as Meshe. We're talking Mosai, intriguing primal ancestor. For those that are able to understand, right? Mazaka through a swerving, through a makeshift, phonetic transfer. Now Mosik, the Mosak, Moses has become meaningless. It's now Kazari, Kazar. Or Mazak. We're going to keep it riding for our queens, man. Who built an empire. Under Tamar, Georgia reached its greatest territorial political height. <laughs> Just sit on that for a minute, man. <laughs> David's surname, Sauslin, is the first known instance of it being used as a personal name. The name is derived from the mythological figure Sauslin. What? Y'all heard about a mythological figure Sauslin? 
who was one of the leading figures in the Ossetian Nart epics. Whoa, see, we finally got a hard hit <laughs> on what this Sauceland title is all about, and then they're relegating it to mythology again, just like Mosa. <laughs> Casualty of the adoption of Greek mythology. Now our, our Nagas, our foundational legends, our intriguing primal ancestors remain completely obscure. A fragment of an abandoned past. A lost memory. A lost memory. Great fire, Hawaii. Mythological fire now. So we got to get on these Nart epics now, I guess, man, because the Sauceland title was coming out of this, uh, this flow. That gives us a whole nother uh, rabbit hole. <laughs> Some more breadcrumbs, man. I'm going to dig on it, you know, press the 102. Hey, we coming in hot, <laughs> digging on the Sauceland's, more on the Panians and some more on the Cholas and this Jadaron flow. Oh, who, oh, who? Let's press the John. The water to the cons for your contribution. Brendan Zavala, David A., all my Nagas. We got Nagas on the move. We need your support, your continued support. You know, for them, <laughs> hey, they've they've taken all our our old testament, you know. <laughs> Just turn it into revelations, right? But what do they have in revelations of? What's their sixteenth century apocalyptic visions about fifteen hundreds dragons, man? <laughs> Seven headed dragons coming out the wall. <laughs> dragons, dragons everywhere in the sky, man. Dragons, dragons everywhere. You know? <laughs> Whenever they think apocalypse, here comes the comments, man. <laughs> and some uh, people out the water. <laughs> dragons, dragons everywhere. We're talking about lady dragons on the wall. Lady Hannah? Or is it Lady uh, Kana? The water for surfing the wave in the 101st installment of the Preston John investigation bonus style for the tribe tribe surfing the wave for the clan roost. We brought it all back to the truth. And we did it with class, and we did it with style, my naga. And I appreciate all my nagas for the class, for the style that you continue to rock with, for the nobility that you continue to raise up, and you never stop the drop. For the queens, for the lady dragons on the wall, all praise our creator. Stay up, suit up, choose up, allow, a wow.